Aloha and mahalo for listening to messages from Victory Outreach Hawaiian Islands. We pray that you are inspired, challenged, and encouraged to become all that God has called for you to be. Praise the Lord. You can go ahead and grab your Bibles with me. And we're going to we're gonna start. Let's just open up with the scripture. Uh, Romans. Romans chapter 12. Verse 1. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. As I turn there, I want to thank God for my salvation, for saving me, amen, for rescuing me, and for what he's doing in our church, amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the word of God reads like this. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Father God, we love you. God, speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go ahead and have your seats in this place. Praise the Lord. Amen. So um, this is our, uh, they called it a super miracle service Sunday shebang, right? <laughs> it's, our, it's our miracle service. Amen. And here, um, when we have our miracle services, basically what we do is we come behind the pulpit and we share our testimony, amen, about how, God, how good God is in our lives, amen. God has been so great to me. He saved me a, a few years ago, amen. He's rescued my life. He's restored my marriage, amen. He set me free from drugs and alcohols and different things that I got myself into, amen. And, and we, we praise God for what he's done. Miracle Sundays, what we do is we pray and hope that we can give hope to other people, newcomers that we've been inviting to church. Amen. We pray that through our lives, God can touch them and reach us, reach them through our testimonies. Amen. But I've been thinking about, um, I've been reading about miracles that God has been doing. God, and well, God did within the, the gospel. I actually had a totally different message, amen, but um, we're going to go off of this. Amen. And um, I've been I've been reading about the miracles that Jesus did. Now Jesus was powerful, man. If you follow the, the 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 life of Jesus, he just wherever he walked, boom, he was doing miracles, creating miracles, creative miracles, raising the dead, and healing the blind, and healing the sick, and all kinds of different things. And and the thing is that miracles weren't just for back then, amen. They weren't just for the Jesus days where people wore sandals and long shirts, amen. It was for today, amen. God has called us, you and I, to be miracle workers. We're part of God's plan, amen. Turn, turn to your neighbor and say, you're part of God's plan. We're part of God's plan. You see, when, when I'm thinking about what's coming up, what, what's, what's on everybody's mind right now? What's on everybody's mind? The crusade, right? We're thinking about shotgun, shotgun. We're thinking about filling up Farrington High School, right? And we're thinking about reaching 1,200 plus people. That's what's on our minds. That's what's on our hearts. That's what's on our lips as we're praying to God, believing that God's going to move in a powerful way. But if you don't realize this, there's, only, there's less than 200 people within this room, amen? There's not that many people here this morning. So what it's going to take is it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take an act of God. I mean, it's going to be Jesus himself showing up on the scene in order for a miracle to take place. I mean, the thing is that you and I are that miracle. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're that miracle. You're the plan. You're the plan. The only way that we're going to reach 1,200, the only way that we're going to reach Kalihi and Pearl City and Waipahu and everywhere throughout this island is you. I mean, you're part of that plan. You're part of that plan. I mean, you're part of that miracle. The way the miracle is going to take place is if you and I are doing what God's called us to do. Amen. We just had a, a great um, uh, holiday. Amen. One of my favorite holidays. Amen. I call it Turkey Day. People call it Thanksgiving. Amen. I call it Turkey because I love turkey. <laughs> and and um, we got full. I ate so much. Oh my God, it was crazy. I weighed myself on Wednesday because I wanted to see where I was at. I was trying my best to like you know, get rid of my fat before I can go all out, all right? I weighed myself on Wednesday, and I ate like crazy on Thursday, and I ate like crazy on Friday, and I finally made myself back to the gym on Saturday, and I weighed myself again. I gained 11 pounds in two days. That's how you do Thanksgiving, my friends. <laughs> but, you know, during the holidays, we, we, we give ourselves a little room, right? We, you know, give, uh, go down on our notch on our belts right we give ourselves we wear sweaters so we, people can't see <laughs> what's going on right and we try we give ourselves a little leg room we give ourselves a little freedom right don't I'm, I'm carrying a little holiday weight now right and we give ourselves that freedom 
Because what holidays are is a little break. It's a break from life, right? It's a break from going all out. It's basically what it is. is it's a day that's set apart for um, that you can, you know, take it easy off of work and, and you, can, you don't have to work as hard. But the reality of it is we, we blame a lot of things on, on, um, on the holidays, right? The, the holiday weight and things like that. The reality of it is, is there's only two days out of those two months that are actually holidays. It's not, you know, all of November and all of December. It's only two days, and we blame the holiday weight. It's a holiday weight. There's only two days we're supposed to be celebrating. And, um, but the thing is... There's a lot of work that needs to be done, amen. God is looking for workers. I was, I was reading the, the actually the, the message that I was going to speak earlier had to do with um, when Jesus was looking amongst the, the multitudes and he saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he said, the, 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 the harvest is plentiful, plentiful, but the labors are few. The workers are few. You know, there's a lot of workers that are just kicking back and not doing what they're supposed to do. Like I said earlier, the way we're going to reach the 1200, the way we're going to fill Farrington is if we're working, amen, if we're getting to it, if we're, if we're putting our hands to the plow, if we're filling our backpacks and our pockets with flyers and letting people know what's going to happen, amen, that's how it's going to take place. And it's going to take a daily thing, amen, it's going to take a daily thing for us in order for us to see that miracle take place. If you believe that God's going to do a miracle on December 9th, I want you to give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Amen. So um, I'm going to, I just want to share um, real quick um, what it's going to take, amen, for us to be able to see that miracle take place. I mean, like I said, we just finished uh, Thanksgiving and then the next holiday is Christmas. Amen. Christmas is coming up. Oh, somebody likes Christmas. <laughs> How many guys are excited about Christmas? Amen. Uh, growing up, I didn't really like Christmas that much. I, I really liked uh, Thanksgiving more because of the food. Um, but I didn't really like Christmas because I grew up. I grew up poor. Anybody grew up poor? <laughs> Christmas wasn't that fun. I mean, it was like it was cool for everybody else, but then you're reminded of how poor you were, right? That's how things. I mean, Christmas was in my in my uh, childhood. Um, you know, everybody's outside playing with their new toys, <laughs> and it's just another day for us. You know, I, I remember. Um, Anybody, I actually, I had a good Christmas. One year, both of my parents were working like two jobs, and we had like all kinds of toys and stuff like that. It was so awesome, and that was the awesomest Christmas ever, right? But then I had Christmases where I remember my dad left, and we were, my mom was raising up four boys on their own, and all I got was a little toy. It was, I remember it was like a, a Cinderella toy, like a little, uh, one of those little mice, and then a pencil. That's all I got that whole year. It wasn't even a toy. It was actually they were giving them away to put on your Christmas tree. And that was my present. The little mouse and a, and a, and a pencil. You know. um, we had Christmases like that. And, that, and um, I don't know. Anybody ever have a Christmas like that? Kind of sad? Kind of. What'd you get for Christmas <laughs> when you get to school? Oh, man. Right? It's not that fun. Um. But I opened up with the scripture here because the Bible tells us that we're supposed to present ourselves to the Lord, amen, our bodies as a living sacrifice, amen. You and I were gifts to God. I, I, um, when I grew up, when I was growing up, my mom would always tell me that's what my name means, Matthew. Matthew means gift of God, right? So, ooh, so it made me big-headed, you know, I thought I was cool, you know, I thought I was, I thought I was, I thought I was God's gift to women. That's the honest truth. That's how, that's how much the devil lies to us. He thought this guy was, <laughs> you know, I thought myself so cool. Now that I, God has opened my eyes, like, it's embarrassing that that's the way I used to think. But that's what I used to think, because, you know, I'm, I'm God's gift. You know, I'm God's gift to the world. Hey, hey, you know. <laughs> that's what I used to think, you know. But the reality is, is you and I, all of us, amen, we are all God's gift. Amen. God, God created us to be a gift. He says to present our lives as a living sacrifice to him, amen, as a living sacrifice. So in other words, that our lives every day, everything that we go through, we're supposed to present ourselves holy and acceptable and pleasing, something that he wants within his life, amen. There's different types of gifts that we get on Christmas, right? You get the uh, the fun gifts. Fun gifts are where you open up the present and it's right there ready to go. You don't have to pop in the, the batteries and you don't have to unscrew things and twist things. It's just ready to go, right? You got the Nerf gun and you just... 
Bam, and, and it's ready to go. You can play out the gate. You don't even have to open any more presents. It's ready to go. Those are the fun gifts. I, I've never gotten any of those. <laughs> but I heard they're really fun. Amen. But the, th- uh, the thing about fun gifts is they only last for a little while. The batteries end up dying. You end up losing those little Nerf things, and then you're just making noise with your, with your mouth, right? And they're, they're not, they don't last forever. They're not made to last for, for, well, maybe they are, but they don't last forever. You know, we lose things. And um, some of us, we present ourselves to the Lord as that type of gift. And man, when we get excited, we get saved, and we get all excited, and, oh, God, I'm going to serve you, and, oh, I'm going to tell everybody about you. And then time goes on, and we're those, those gifts with no power. We run out of batteries. God can't use us anymore. We're supposed to be that gift that God can use, and we become those type of gifts that God cannot use anymore. The Bible talks about in Matthew 13 about um, those that receive the word of God, and they spring up, and they get all excited, but then the thorns and and the the different things of life choke them and kill them, and, and they're no longer, you know, this beautiful plant that God created them to be. Some of us were presenting ourselves as that type of gift to the Lord. Where, man, he was so proud, man, I touched him, I saw him crying at the altar, but then moments go on, life goes on, and and you encounter things, and no longer are you that gift that's fun anymore, man. You're that powerless gift that's not making any noise anymore, that's not being effective, that's not being the one that you're supposed to be. There's another gift um, that we get on Christmas, amen, it's a, it's a, they're fillers, fillers, right? We got some parents in the house. You can't, you know, you want to you make it look cool with all the presents and stuff. And, and, and what you do is you buy big gifts and then you buy the little ones, right? The little $2, $3, $4 ones that, that make it look like there's so much stuff, right? So when people come over, oh, wow, you guys got a lot of presents. But in reality, it's just those real cheap gifts, you know what I mean? That, that, those, are, those are the fillers. I mean, those are the ones that I got. <laughs> I didn't get the big ones. I got the fillers. I mean, but the fillers, what the fillers are is they're just, they're there for look, basically. I mean, after a while, you, you, you lose those little gifts. You know, they're fillers. They're not that fun. They don't make noise. You know, they don't light up and do all the cool stuff. They're just, they're there just to, to, to make it look good. And some of us, we are those type of gifts. I and mean, we're presenting ourselves to the Lord as those type of gifts. In other words, we show up. God sees us in church. You know, people see us and we're looking good and, and we look nice and we're going along with everything. But we're only fillers. We're only just there. You know, we're just, we're just part of the crew. We're just, we're just in the home to make the home look filled up. You know, we're just part of, of, of the, the, the people that go out to the streets. We don't pass any flyers out, but we're just fillers. We're just part of the team. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be a filler, man. I don't want to be that type of gift. I don't want to present myself as that type of gift. The, the story that I was reading um, that I was going to share earlier it talked about, um, I was watching, I was re- watching, I was reading. And when I read, and my mind goes, oh, I can see all this stuff, right? So it's kind of like I was watching it. But it was like uh, um, the story, if you want to look it up, it's in Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. It talks about how Jesus is walking, boom, doing these miracles, doing these miracles. He raised the dead. He bl- healed two blind people. He, this woman came and touched, her, uh, touched his coat, and she got healed. And all these different things were taking place. But throughout that story, you see all the, these, uh, these people called the, the Pharisees. They're, they're teachers of the law, right? They know all about God. They grew up learning about God. They were, they were brought up. They were scholars. They, had, they, they knew everything about the law and about God. But throughout the story, what, they, what you see the Pharisees doing is they're talking smack. They're talking about, oh, man, look at this guy. He thinks he's God's son. And, you know, they're, and they're, they're, they're just fillers. They're the ones, that's the ones that I'm talking about, fillers. I mean, that they're just, they're supposed to be the ones that are reaching people. They're the one, they're supposed to be the ones that are making a difference, but they're just filling up the church. They're just filling up the seats. They're just filling up the 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 scene to make it look more filled right when you have a drama you try to you have the background people those that's what those people are the 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 pharisees became those type of people see when he says the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few there were workers the pharisees were supposed to be the workers and the pharisees were the ones that were supposed to be doing the work that god um had intended for them to do there were workers but they were not working, amen. They weren't doing anything. There's some of us, amen, that we're presenting ourselves to God, that, that type of gift, that we're fillers. We're here. God, I'm here every Sunday. I'm here every Friday. I'm here, you know, where I'm supposed to be. I go to practice and things like that, but we, we're just filling up 
the place and we're filling up the, the seats. We don't want to be those type of gifts, amen? The third type of gift that I, that I see here, um, or that was that the Lord placed this message in my heart. And the third uh, gift that I, that I think of when I think about gifts that we receive you know, on Christmas, of course, you got the, the fun gifts, like I said, the fillers. The third one is the practical gifts, a practical gift, a practical gift. What the practical gifts are, you usually, usually get the practical gifts from your, your family, your grandma, your dad, or your, your mom. A practical gift is basically it's something that you can use every day. And it's, it's like it's a pair of socks, you know, a package of undershirts and things like that. A cool little sweater that you can wear. Well, not little, <laughs> but, you know, a sweater that you can wear all the time. You know, it's, it's a practical gift, a practical gift that you can use all the time. Parents, we think that way, right? Like we're going to put something that they can use. It's the biggest bang for your buck, right? A practical gift is something that can be used every day, every single day. Amen. That's, that's a gift that I don't know about you guys, but I want to be that type of gift, amen, for the Lord. I want to be the type of gift that God can use every single day. That, you know, it's not, I know I'm not going to have a bad day. I'm not, you know, going through something, oh, God, you can't use me today because of what I did earlier, you know. But I want to be the type of gift that God can use every single day, amen. I want to be the type of gift that God, I mean, you know what, when the day starts, he wants to play with. He wants to use. He wants to send out, amen. He wants to use me to work the work and do what he's called me to do. A practical gift begins, is able to be used every single day. It may not be that fun. It may, it may not be, you know, loud and light up and all that fun stuff. But it's something that you can use every single day. That's the type of gift that we want to be, amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 23, the Bible, the Bible tells us that we have to pick up our cross daily and follow the Lord, amen. We got to do it every single day. We got, in other words, God's got to be able to use us every day, amen. It's not just because I'm, I'm going through it that, God, you can't use me, or, man, I'm about to slip, I'm, oh, I, I messed up, you know, that God's, God can't use me. But you know what? Instead, it's the type of gift, we want to be the type of gift that God can use every single day, amen, that God wants to use every single day anybody want to be a practical gift i'm talking about presenting yourself as a gift amen you see the gift us being a gift to god us being a gift that god can use that's how he's going to perform the miracles. I mean, that's how he's, it's still Jesus, of course. Jesus is still in the miracle working business where he, you know, heals the blind and, you know, brings salvation and things like that. But it's through us. I mean, God uses us. We have to be that gift in order for him to use for that miracle to take place. Amen. This is the last gift um, that I'm going to talk about here. This is the most favoritest gift. This is uh, the gift that everybody desires i mean the type of gift that you want the gift that that the best gift that you can get of course you know salvation thank you jesus but what i'm saying is the gift that you want under the tree the best gift that beats you know the fun gift that beats the fillers that beats the practical gift the best gift that you can get at christmas is getting exactly what you want that's the type of gift that you want. You know, you, you can pass, you can pass the, the gift cards and you can pass the socks and you can pass, you know, the, the cool little gun that lights up. But you know what? The gift that you want is the gift that you asked for. I asked for a bike and I can see it wrapped up in this paper. I know that's a bike. That's nothing else. You know, I, I you know, I, I broke my, my skateboard last week and I can see that that is a skateboard. You know, I'm, I'm a, I want this certain game, this new console that just came out and I could tell that that's the same size and I shake it i know that it's that you know and that's the gift that you get excited about that all those other gifts those fluff and the the feelers and all those other things you can look beyond those and that's the one that you're looking at that's the one that you keep your eye on because you know exactly what it is that's the gift my friend that you and i want to be the gift that God's called us to be, amen, exactly what he's called us to be. I don't know about you guys, but that's the gift that I want to be, amen. I don't want to be the gift that's all fun and only loud for a little while, you know what I mean? Or, you know, something that he can use every day, but he doesn't, I don't know. I mean, it's not that great. It's just, you know, once in a while. I want to be the gift that he 
wants him and the gift that he's created me to be the gift that you know what i can't wait till december 25th you know i broke my board but on december 25th i'm gonna be uh, riding my skateboard on, on december 25th i'm gonna get exactly what i want on december 25th I'm, I'm gonna be able to open up that package and everything that i've been wanting for everything that i've been thinking about everything that i've been being nice and washing the dishes and cleaning the floor and, and doing what i'm supposed to do for i'm finally gonna get it because it's there that's the gift that I want to be, amen. That's the gift that I want to be. I may not be there yet, amen. I may not, it may, I may have a long ways to go. I may still mess up and I may still make mistakes, but you know what? It's coming, amen. It's coming. It's right around the corner. I may not, I may not talk the way that I should yet. I may not act the way that I should. I may still stumble and mess up, but it's, it's, it's coming, amen. It's right around the corner. That's the type of gift that we want to be to the Lord, amen. That you know what, that on December 9th, when that comes around, that it's going to be a, a, a fruit of our labor, amen, because we're doing what God's called us to do, amen, because we're functioning as the gift that God wants us to be. We're talking about uh, having a miracle. We're talking about seeing miracles in our lives. It's going to take us being and doing what God's called us to do, amen, God's called us to be, and God's called us to, to say and to go, amen, and it's, it's going to be you and I picking up our cross daily and following Christ, amen. Praise Lord. I'm, I'm going to bring it to a close. Uh, let's all stand in this place. mode right now of the holiday season you know everybody's thinking about presents and all that stuff right christmas is coming up you think you're trying to do the math of your bills that are coming in and presents and things like that and what's cool about christmas is it's just it's just a day you know that that we that the world is commercialized you know even what i was talking about just presence and things like that um it's something that's been very commercialized you know it's of course it was it's a day that we're supposed to celebrate jesus the birth of jesus but it's gotten to a point where people they think about all they think about is materialistic things and what's cool though about it to me is that it gives people something to look forward to you know it gives something uh, of course you know it's not it's you know, if you don't have all the money in the world, don't feel like a bad parent. And then you can't buy your parent, your kids things or, you know, you, if that's not what Christmas is about. I'm not here to be a Christmas special event or anything like that. I, I, what I'm saying is this, that that the day that the kids wake up to and they're all excited and they're all they're all excited about what they're going to get is it gives them it gives them excitement. It gives them hope. Amen. And, and to me. My hope and my excitement is knowing that one day I'm going to be able to be that gift to the Lord. Amen. That my, I'm, I'm not that. I'm definitely not there yet. You know, like I said earlier, like none of us have. I don't know if we'll ever get there, man. But knowing that, you know what, I'm going to be that one day. One day I'm going to be something that God can use. One day I'm going to be something that God's going to use. Man, I, 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 could, I could stop and look at all my mistakes. I could stop and look at all my imperfections. I could stop and look at all the things that I'm not. But if I look to what God's called me to be, amen, if I look and I keep my eyes onto what's call, what God's calling me to be, and then I have hope, amen. In Philippians 3, 13 and 14, the Bible says, not that I've obtained everything, you know, he's, he's talking about, I, I don't got it all together. But he presses on towards the prize because one day, one day I and mean, that day is coming that one day is coming as long as i press on to the prize man i mess up i slip but that one day is coming that day is right around the corner man and all we have to do is believe all that we have to do is continue to fight the good fight we might lose some battles I amen mean, we might we might lose some some of the battles along the way but as long as we continue continue to press on to what god has for us man 
And that one day is there, man. We're going we're gonna to be exactly what God's called us to be, that gift that he's called us to be, amen. All over this place, I want you to begin to close your eyes. Come on, begin to lift up your hands and just begin to worship the Lord, amen. See, you and I were part of something great, amen. You and I were part of something, something awesome that God's going to do. Like I said earlier, you and I were part of that plan. We're part of the plan that God's called to reach the Hawaiian Islands, amen. You and I are part of that plan that God's going to use to break open this island, to reach the hurting, to reach the lost. The 1,200 mark, and the 1,200 seater, amen, it might, might seem impossible. It might, it's going to take a miracle, but you and I are part of that plan, amen. It's going to take us stepping out of ourselves and becoming that gift that God really wants us to be, amen. Becoming and doing exactly what God's called us to be. So right there, you're at, I want you to just begin to ask God to begin to prepare you to get you ready. Listen, the task is great. It seems impossible because it is without God. But as long as we have the Lord, and nothing is impossible with Christ, amen. So come on, all over this place, just begin to ask the Lord to pour out his anointing upon you. Ask God to begin to prepare your heart to change you, to begin to change you in your heart, in your mind, in your life. to present ourselves as a, as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice unto him so that he can use us, use us in this generation, in our city, in our schools, in our workplaces.